Unlike the LPC algorithm, which computes prediction coefficients for a block of samples and transmits these coefficients alongside the prediction error to the receiver, the least mean squares algorithm updates the prediction coefficients after each sample based only on past samples. Here, we need the assumption that the signal statistics does not change much from the past to the present. Since it is based on the past samples, which are also available as decoded samples at the decoder, we do not need to transmit the coefficients to the decoder. Instead, the decoder carries out the same computations in synchrony with the encoder. Instead of a matrix formulation, we use an iterative algorithm to come up with a solution for the prediction coefficients h, the vector which contains the time-reversed impulse response. To show the dependency on the time n, we now call the vector of prediction coefficients hn with this equation here. And again, we would like to minimize the mean quadratic prediction error with the prediction error with the original signal minus the predicted. Instead of using the closed form solution, which leads to the Wienerhoff solution, we now take an iterative approach. Um, to approach the minimum of this optimization function. We use the algorithm of steepest descent, also called gradient descent, to iterate towards the minimum, with an uh, optimization function as our squared prediction error. Here we have the algorithm gradient descent used in machine learning, deep learning, and we have here from optimization function squared prediction error. Observe that we omitted the expectation of operator E for simplicity. We expect that after several update steps, there will be inherently some average. This is also called the stochastic gradient descent. We have the gradient as the row vector. And we get the individual derivatives by this formula here. So together we obtain the LMS algorithm for the update rule given by this formula here. For k going from 0 to L minus 1, and alpha is a tuning parameter. So the factor 2 is incorporated into alpha, so factor 2 here, with which we can trade off conversion speed and conversion accuracy. A derivation or computation of the alpha value can be found in the lecture slide uh, set 15 of our lecture on multi-rate signal processing. So in vector form, this LMS update rule is given by this. And here we have um, coefficients, we have our alpha, we have error, our original signal, this will update the h of n. Observe that we need no matrices or matrices inverses in this case, just the simple update rule, and it still works. It still converges to the correct coefficients. For the prediction coefficients h, we have something like a sliding window of the past L samples x of n of our signal. For mu, there are different recipes, for instance, the so called normalized LMS uses the inverse signal power as alpha. If the signal power is 1, then alpha can be 1. But in general, it is subject to hand tuning and trial and error.